Okay, so we talked about signal, filter, distortion. Now let's get to phase. Okay, so one of the ways that I thought about this or, or have thought about it is that like the way that the volume and the distortion and the Q kind of deal with what's happening like vertically, like from zero to F and like wrapping around and stuff like that. Uh, the, the, the range of what you're boosting and what is quiet. Um, phase deals with what's happening horizontally. So um, let's see. Let's go back to Renoise. The fun thing about a lot of trackers, and this one is also included, is that you can like actually like draw in your own waveforms. <laughs> So I was thinking that it might be interesting to like talk about this in terms of what happens here. So if we if I try to draw like a very sort of pulse-ish wave. Oh, that sounds like a pulse wave. That's pretty good. <laughs> Phase yeah. deals with what happens like when you do this. Uh, okay, so I'll just illustrate it. <laughs> so you're essentially changing the length of the of the duty cycle. Um, oops, I'm gonna start down here. Write this. We'll we'll go back to uh, sawtooth and stuff in a minute, but let's just use square because of the illustration that I just gave. So we have phase on normal. We have let's set our volume to something that looks kind of pretty squarish, and the Q here and the cut off all the way up. So that we've got, you know, basically this kind of squarey thing. Oops. And then take off this table. Although I really like that table. So, uh, let's see. Weirdly, the phase, you would think that the phase in LSDJ at zero would be like this. And that, you know, FF would be here. But you just have to remember that this kind of inverted. So like phase zero zero starts you off at here with like your normal wave. And then as you go to FF, what it does is like adds more space, almost like if you were to take this and extend it out <laughs> such that like the original length of the thing is actually the same, but you're uh, adding on more over here. So like the more phase that you add, the more it kind of like distorts it that way. So if you move the phase over to 1F, like you can see what happens in frames, you know, zero through F. So you can see that like the wave is actually the same, but it just gets kind of shortened as you squish it to the right or left rather until you have, you know, just one, one little blip all the way over here. And then when you go back, you know, it goes back to its normal regular form so that's what normal does and of course this is your like sort of typical it's uh, i don't know speed three uh ping pong loop position zero i think it's kind of more of you know apparent if you slow down the speed or speed up speed it up and so that's what that does. It's kind of like, you know, having, I don't know, 15 or not 15, like eight, eight different pulse waves in one. Um, uh, so let's see. So does that mean we are not limited to? Yeah, no, that is right. Yeah. So, well, you, what you are limited to, you know, are, oops, I'm going to go up here you know, you've got 50% and then whatever the eight, <laughs> eight or so um, divisions are between that and, I don't know, what's 100 divided by eight? Each one of those is whatever you've got. Or no, I guess 50, 50 divided by eight. I don't want to do the math, but that's about what, 6% six, 6 or something? <laughs> Point two five. Yeah, six point something ish. Two. Is that right? Well, it's half of twelve point five. Yeah, there you go. See. You so yeah, you can get all the way down to six point two five and all the way up to fifty in increments of six point two five. 
I guess that should be right. I think. I don't know. Correct, correct me later if I'm wrong. But that's the basic idea. Okay, so so that's normal. N normal. I say that that's normal because it, it is normal. Um, <laughs> so so that's what happens when you change the phase horizontally in normal mode. And like one of the things that I really like to do is use this on like a sine or triangle because I think it gives a really cool effect and it's not it's not really used that much. Um, so I'll play with that sounds like. Like, it's just kind of a cool effect that, like, you don't hear it a lot. Um, let's hear what it sounds like with a sawtooth. Oh, you know, this is a really cool um, technique. This pulse, what's, you know, it's basically pulse width modulation. That's what they call it. PWM, pulse width modulation. Because you're modulating the width of this pulse. So... Uh, even though, in the, I guess, in the technical sense, this would be a saw wave modulation or something, I guess. But um, it was a really common, um, and still is, I guess, in like certain uh, tracker musics and stuff to, to do that. Sometimes I don't like to start the phase in the middle. Sometimes I like to kind of bump it up so that you're not really getting, that you're already starting with a little bit of extra of extra, you know, width on the bottom. But this can be a really effective, or even more probably, this can be a really effective bass is what I'm trying to say. And maybe we don't go all the way up to one F, I don't know. Sometimes you have to play with the range a little just depending on what your ear tells you. Or even like taking the length out. So anyways, um, so that's what phase does. When you get into resync, instead of just adding length onto the end, it will keep this the same and then just like, well, guess what? We're gonna start another pulse wave now. <laughs> and the more you increase it, like you find like, oh, look, we're adding more pulse waves. So it'll just like, uh, you know, multiply them basically the more phases you have until you get up to like 15 pulse waves in your pulse wave. <laughs> so it's easier to see if you watch what happens in LSDJ than watch me draw and renoise. But actually, it's kind of an interesting point because when you listen to this, you get a bunch of different sounds. So. If we start this at zero, put this at one F, and then we look at our waveforms. So here's our phase. Oop, what happened? Oh yeah, I need to change it from normal to resync. So it's just gonna duplicate this as you keep going. Oh yeah, I'm on three. So it's like gonna um, squash it, but also bring in, it's like, hey, you've got a roommate. <laughs> You got a little pulse wave roommate. And then like, oh, you better. I hope that this house has room for 15 of us or whatever. <laughs> I guess it's eight, right? Because you've got these little, so like you can think of like these two together as like a little pulse wave. So fun fact, this is actually the same wave that you get if you put this on normal and what do we go to a sawtooth and put our cutoff at F and boost the Q a bunch. Uh, wait, hang on. My phase is still set there. Yeah, kind of. Uh, oh, it has to be band pass. Band pass. I don't know, it's, it's almost the same. <laughs> I need to up the Q and find the right cutoff. But the idea is that like, you're essentially just adding it's another way to add harmonics like a like a filter sweep. Okay. Where was I? Let's listen to what this sounds like with a normal speed and all the way up. Oh no, I set it back to normal. I need to resync.
So it's kind of like going up the harmonic series again. So like, let's say you, you know, wanted to add some harmonics, but you didn't want to mess around with the filter stuff. You can just set phase to resync. And like do that kind of a thing. Oops. You can kind of hear it like going up the harmonic series almost and then coming back down and like kind of the same thing there. So it's like adding more harmonics in the same way that using the low pass and going up, you know, to cut off is. Actually, what I should have done was set this a high pass because high pass would show me. Ah, <laughs> there we go. That's like basically what that looks like. We just turn the cue all the way up and then like, no. Okay, fine. It's, it's, you know, it's not perfect. Manual. Manual. Oops. It's almost the same as uh, this. Mm -mm. <laughs> what did I do? Ah. It's just the highest harmonic that you can get. So, that's what Resync does. It adds more harmonics uh, by squashing them and giving them more roommates. Um, Resync 2 is like... <laughs> If, uh, if the roommates also ate your house, <laughs> um, well, let's put my volume back down a little bit. So it just kind of was like, Hey, I'm also your roommate and I'm going to eat you. <laughs> uh, it doesn't squash the wave at all. It just adds it on top. So like. You can see that, like, right, you know, with this wave, we've got, or rather, I guess I should start here. With the with the beginning wave, we've got we've got some Fs, we've got the top of our dynamic range, and we've got some zeros at the bottom of our dynamic range. the The wave takes up the entire dynamic range, so it's kind of loud. It's even clipping here, like, because this is a sawtooth, so it actually is is going above this, um, but we're just clipping it off. And then as you bringing in this other wave on top of it, like, you lose out on half of your dynamic range. So you've only got values between eight and F. So the, the practical effect of this is that like when you add another waveform like this on top of it, you just start, your wave just gets half as loud. So it's like, uh, I'm just gonna just do this. So like it just gets quiet. So I don't know. I honestly, like, if you ask me, like, when would you ever use Resync 2? I don't, I don't think I've ever used it, but eh, it's there if you want it, I guess. Um, I'm probably more likely to use Resync 2 and then use Limit. So, um, so let's, let's hear this. So it's like a gnarly sound, but half as loud. Um... This is like a gnarly sound, but fully as loud. The, the main thing to think about for me is just like what happens uh, horizontally is what's controlled by this. Um, I like I like using resync resync a lot because sometimes I don't want to sometimes I have a sound that I really don't want to mess with the filter at all. Like I like the I like that. So like and you know, you only have so many options as far as like what you can really do with the filter. So if it's, it can be useful if you want to do something like a, have a band pass or an all pass filter, but you want to start going up the harmonic series, you can do that. Because even though all pass lets all of the things through, by the time you get up to here in the phase, you know, you can still get all the way up. 
you can get those really gnarly sounds with all pass. You don't have to use like a band pass or a high pass. Um, so that's what I like to use that for.